Well, good morning. You all look pretty good <laughs> uh, for a beautiful Easter Sunday morning. It's good to see you all and to be in worship together. Um, as we reflect on this passage, very familiar text from the Gospel of John. It's not lost on me that for two days, for two days, the Word of God, and, and I mean by that the Word with a lowercase w, and the Word, as John understands it, the Word made flesh, the Word of God was silent, sealed in a tomb. The one whose voice is good news to the poor Release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, the one whose voice loosens the bonds of injustice, sets the captives free, the one whose voice calmed the seas, healed the sick, offered grace, peace, love. That voice was crucified, died, and was buried and lay silent in the tomb. It appeared that sin and death and the worst that we could do had won. We had succeeded, as Bonhoeffer says, in pushing God out of the world, out of our systems, out of our lives, where God could no longer meddle, and onto a cross. There would be no more word from the Lord. Everyone knew death was the end. You don't come back. The last words had been spoken from the cross and now only a void. Soon to be filled once again, because voids are always filled with something, Filled with the voices of greed and power and control and coercion and violence. The very voices that had silenced the Word of God. And in that awful silence that often accompanies death, Mary stood weeping. She had been with Jesus as He journeyed to Jerusalem she was with him on the way and, and witnessed him heal the sick and care for the brokenhearted. She had seen him offer hope and restore sight to the blind and speak truth to power, feed the hungry, welcome everyone to his table. She was there when Jesus confronted the principalities and the powers, there as he proclaimed the reign of God. She was there when Jesus prayed, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And yes, Mary was there to the bitter end, watching the life drain from the body of the one whom she believed and the disciples believed to be the Word of God in the flesh. How could such a thing happen? How could they have gotten it so wrong? The bitter disappointment, the anger, the frustration, the fear, the sadness, sense of loss and betrayal, surely welled up within her. And as if some kind of, if you've ever had one in the midst of grief, some kind of out-of-body experience where you end up somewhere and you almost don't even know how you got there, Mary finds herself outside of the tomb of Jesus weeping. Weeping in the silence. Mary's presence there outside Jesus' tomb is in some way symbolic probably of how all the disciples must have experienced that first Easter morning without hope, separated from the one whom they knew and loved, lost, alone, maybe guilt-ridden about the ways they had betrayed Him and turned their back on Him, hopeless, feeling God-forsaken, they thought he was going to be the one to, to save them and to restore Israel. 
His words had inspired and healed and and touched them and countless others to their very core. Now that voice was silent, presumably never to be heard from again. And in some way, I think their sadness and Mary's sadness is also our sadness. Mary's anger and fear are the world's anger and fear. Her broken heart in some way points to all the brokenhearted anywhere today. All those who are without hope, who wonder, is there someone who might save them? If they might hear a word of comfort, of grace, of peace, if there might be some light that could shine in their darkness. So like Mary, maybe we too wonder. Is there on this Easter day anything beautiful, anything good, anything new? My guess is we all know someone, or maybe many someones, who like Mary and the disciples are are pretty sure the final words for them have also been spoken, who wonder if, if... if there's any reason to press on, any, any light in their darkness, any, any hope in the wilderness that life has become, if God might speak to them because they don't hear God speaking, we need only talk to the widow who's just months away from the, months past the death of her husband. She, she knows Mary's sadness. She knows what it feels like to be caught somewhere in between Easter and, and, and Good Friday. Talk to the husband who's reeling from his wife's exit of their marriage. He knows Mary's grief, Mary's brokenness. Talk to the child, who's for the, the young adult the, who's lost, for, forgotten, lonely, depressed, who's wondering if there's any hope, any reason to keep going. Talk to... <laughs> Yes, there is. <laughs> There's an Easter sermon for you. All right, we can go home. <laughs> but we're not because Carolina Brass is here and, we, and the choir, and we're not going home. Sorry. Sorry, you're not going home yet. Um, but the one living in, you know, who just can't free themselves from the chains of their addiction... The prisoner who's deeply ashamed, whose family stopped coming to visit, no longer calls. The ones who know today is Easter but believe church isn't a place where they could come or where they might be welcome. The ones who believe they have no future, no better days because they're so ashamed, so so bound by their past. They and so many others know life after Friday. That awful silence. They all know, and sometimes so do we, what it's like when the Word of God seems to speak no more. I wonder, um, you know, why, why wait? Why on Friday wait? Why did God not just raise Jesus up immediately? Cast the, the soldiers aside? Roll the stone back from where it came. Offer hope right in the moment. God waited. God seemingly did nothing for a time. There were days when God seemed silent, powerless even. Maybe it's because, I wonder if it's because God knew that we would experience life and loss and love in just this way. We have hope. And yet we wait. Life can be like Saturday. Good Friday has happened. The worst the world could do is upon us. Easter has not yet come. And we find ourselves somewhere in between. Hoping and waiting for something new. And so there is Mary. In that painful, silent waiting. Mary represents us, the church. There we are beside the tomb of Jesus in our own way, in the silence, waiting. You know the story. She bent over. She looked in the tomb. 
She, she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. Jesus' body was missing. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said, well, they've taken away my Lord. I don't know where they've laid him. But if, if you'll, you'll tell me, I'll go and find him. That's what she says to the stranger who appears behind her. Because she supposes that he's the gardener. Until he calls her name. Mary. And she responds, Rabbi, out of the silence, that voice, she recognized the voice. John says the sheep know the shepherd's voice and they follow. It was the very same voice she had heard say, rise and walk, your faith has made you well. The very same voice she and the disciples had heard countless times say, you are forgiven, It was the voice who said, come and follow me. The voice that said, love one another. The very voice that in the beginning, in in the beginning when there was nothing but a chaotic void, it was the very voice that said, let there be. And all that was and is and ever will be was created. It was that voice once again spoken into the void to bring forth life. Turns out the last words weren't so final after all. On Friday, the principalities and powers of this world murdered and buried Jesus of Nazareth. End of the story, they thought. We've done away with that little problem. Friday and Saturday were for his disciples and followers, friends and family, days of weeping, of uncertainty, of waiting, of of a kind of hopelessness, a a kind of paralysis brought on by guilt, guilt and fear and shame and grief. They were days of silence, but as Will Willimon says, on Easter, God came back. God came back. There may be times in life when we feel as if we're living our lives like Mary, somewhere between Friday and Sunday, weeping at the tomb, unaware of Easter, unable to hear the voice, like we're we're caught, paralyzed, unable to to free ourselves from from our our grief, our fear, our sin, our shame, our brokenness, our resentment, our hurt. But friends, today is Easter. It is the day that changes all of our other days. On Easter, God came back. Came back to Mary, to the disciples, uh, to all His friends. Came back, called them by name, invited them to follow. And life began again. A new humanity risen from the dust, from the grave. We are an Easter people, friends. Life may feel like Good Friday. It may sometimes feel like Saturday. But we are not a Good Friday or a Saturday people. We are a Sunday Easter people. No matter where we find ourselves this day, there is no darkness that can be that cannot be overcome by the light of Christ. There is no sadness that Christ has not already known and transformed. There's no sin or guilt or shame that is not forgiven. There's no death that has not been conquered. And there is no life that is not sacred and worthy of God's love. On Easter, God comes back to to those who stand weeping and wondering and and lost and angry and afraid, comes to all of us, calls each of us by name, speaks a word into our silence, and invites us to continue the journey from death and fear to life. What was true then for Mary is true for us now. The very power of God, which at first took Christ from the grave, is among us to raise us to new life. 
The powerful Word of God that liberated Jesus from the bonds of death is available, present with us here and now, to resurrect these dusty lives of ours and to help us live life abundantly. And therein lies our hope. The risen Lord comes to us from the other side of death to offer life and to transform any weeping into tears of joy. The power which on Easter Day shattered the silence is now given to us that we might live. That's the good news of Easter, which renews and enlivens even the most oppressed and disillusioned and defeated among us. This is the theme that inspires our music and our preaching, empowers our witness. It is our hope, and we are called to be ambassadors of that hope to live our lives in such a way that they only make sense if Easter is true. My friends, wherever you are today, whatever Good Fridays you may have known, whatever cross you are bearing, if you find yourself somewhere like, like the silence of Saturday, living between loss and hope, hear the good news of Easter. God has come back to you, wherever you are calls you by name, speaks a word into the silence of your hearts. The crucified Son is the risen Lord. The the victim is the victor. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. Death doesn't win. And the last words from the cross are not final. This is a new day, and we are an Easter people. Cling to that hope. Beyond the pain, beyond the loss, beyond the cross, there is an empty tomb, always. And there, new life begins. The seeds of it have been planted, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, new life has come. It is a life of joy, a life of peace, a life of hope, because Jesus, whom we believed had spoken his last words and then grew silent, The very same Jesus today comes to you and to me and calls us by name. Today the word of God resounds from the other side of the grave. Friends, take heart. Do not fear. Follow me, Jesus says. And then go and tell. Share this good news with others so that anyone anywhere today who's longing for Easter, any Marys out there, standing and waiting in the silence, will know, will know the hope of the Lord, will experience new life, and will know that God offers a chance to begin again. Thanks be to God. Amen.